At yeah. least you were laying like, on the ground. He used to <laughs> do that to me when I was running away from camp. And then he would whisper cut, and I would keep going until I was back at the dressing room. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are indeed going back to Walnut Grove with several wonderful actors from Little House on the Prairie. Our first guest is an actress who joins us today to discuss the role shared with her twin sister and the character of Carrie, Celestia Ingalls. Please welcome Rachel Lindsay Greenbush. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, and you? Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, absolutely. It's our pleasure. Uh, how are you doing in your corner of the world? We're doing good. We're getting back to some point of normalcy, but but it's all uh, good moving forward. Absolutely. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm so looking forward to this conversation with you and your castmates. Me too, me too. Indeed. And speaking of, our next guest, she is an actress whose roles include Summer School, A Perfect World, and Going South. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of school teacher Eliza J. Wilder. Please welcome Lucy Lee Flippin. Hi. Hi from Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, Lucy, so glad to have you here. Thank you. Oh, I, I just want to say you, you've had a you've had a career that uh, you've been involved in several films that I adore. Like I said, Summer School, and I, sometime I hope I can sit down with you and uh, talk about those other projects. I especially love to hear about Going South, but especially over all the things I've heard about that shoot over the decades. Uh oh, it was a very long shoot. <laughs> so I've heard in more ways than one. <laughs> but lots of different stimulants. Uh, yeah. So I've heard. So I've heard. Well, Lucy, thank you so much for joining us today. This is an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Indeed. And next, she is an actress whose credits include Eraserhead, Twin Peaks, and Tremors. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Eva Beetle Sims, or simply known as Miss Beetle to her students. Please welcome Charlotte Stewart. There, there, there I am. Hi. Yes, hi. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining us, Charlotte. How are you? I'm really good. I'm here in Napa, California. It's about 99 degrees today. Um, it's uh, very, very pleasant. I went and took my walk this morning. I walk every morning and go check the neighbor's yards and all of that. So, yeah, it's a beautiful day here. Oh, so glad to have you here. And uh, I'm, I'm a, again, uh, you've been a part of several of David Lynch's uh, projects, many near and dear to my heart. I find it very ironic that as a child, uh, I watched you in Little House of the Prairie as a teenager. <laughs> I saw you at Eraserhead. And as a college student, young child, I get to enjoy you on Twin Peaks. So it's definitely a curious evolution oh. in your roles. <laughs> I know. I know people can't believe that Miss Beetle was the same person as in Eraserhead. But, you know, that's called acting. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it is. And uh, speaking of which, let's bring on our next guest. He is a producer, actor, and documentarian whose body of work includes Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The New Gidget, and Into the Woods. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of handsome lad, Almanzo James Wilder. Please welcome Dean Butler. Hey, Patty, how are you? I am good, boss. How are you today? Uh, very good. Very good. I am here, as Charlotte is in Northern California. I concur with Charlotte. It is about 99 degrees here in the area, I'm overlooking uh, the, I'm high above the bay, looking out over the bay across to San Francisco. Uh, you can't see that, but I can, and it's beautiful. Wow, <laughs> I, I absolutely envy you on that, and uh, you so get to see the, hey, so Moondoggy, you think you'll go out and catch some waves later? Uh, cowabunga. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that out. I had to throw that out. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> well, then, uh, Dean, thank you so much for joining us here today. Absolutely. Absolute pleasure. Man. Absolutely. And, uh, nice and next, there. she is an Emmy award-winning actress whose credits include Boy Meets World, Twins, and of course, St. Elsewhere. So today, she joins us to discuss the role of Grace Cinder Edwards. Please welcome Bonnie Bartlett. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Hello. Oh, oh Bonnie. Buddy, how are you today? I'm fine. I, this is fun. This is fun. I have to have help, but it's fun. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, again, my uh, just, I'm a great admirer of your body of work, um, and I just have to say, you absolutely deserve those two Emmys from Saint Elsewhere. 
Oh, I love that. I did love that. So I enjoyed doing uh, Little House as much as any other job I ever had. I was so, Bill used to, my husband used to say, oh, I used to watch you go off early, early in the morning, taking your car and going out there to see me valley. He said, you were such a happy camper. And I said, yes, I was. It was a very happy experience. <laughs> oh, so glad to have you here. Can't wait to hear about some more of these experiences. Let's move on with our next guest. She is an actress and activist whose body of work includes Living on a Prairie, The Last Place on Earth, and author of the book, Confessions of a Prairie Bitch. Hmm. <laughs> today, today she joins us to discuss the role of one of television's favorite villains, Nellie Olson Dalton. Please welcome Allison Argrim. Yay! <laughs> hi, hi, everybody's here. I'm so excited because this is how we all get to see each other now because we don't all live in the same place anymore. So it's like, yay! Oh, look, Charlotte! Oh, Bonnie! Oh, yay, Lucy! So this is like family reunion. We're so happy. Thank you. Oh, so glad to have you here. Uh, yeah. How are you doing in your corner of the world? Well, yeah, we're, uh, as you see, I'm in Paris. The, oh, yeah. Well, actually, it's a French territory that was established in my living room. And uh, we decided this little <laughs> house is Paris. Because um, I do go there a lot, so I thought I just, it, it, there it is. Um, but yeah, we're um, hanging out, and Dean and I are going to be in South Dakota at the end of the month, and it'll be even hotter than it is here. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Well, Allison, so glad to have you here. As I said on the show, I'm here in Orlando, and many friends saw you live at, uh, at doing one of your shows. Your it basically was a uh, sort of a, a a live version of your book, right? Yeah, what's the one woman show stand up yeah. with question and answer and fun stuff? Yeah, that was a good Par Parliament House in Orlando. That was so much fun, so much fun that game. Well, they're building a new one, and hope to see you there soon. <laughs> and speaking of, ladies and gentlemen, GalaxyCon viewers, we have a bonus guest joining us here today for her role as Caroline Ingalls. Please welcome Karen Gressel. Forty percent of my job is researching everybody's names for the do this. This is part of that. Karen, I'm so sorry. Karen no, it's fine. It reminds me of the first time we went on the air, you know, and I'm so excited. I'm sitting with my family and we're all getting ready. And at the intermission, the announcer says, and we'll be right back with Little House on the Prairie with Michael Landon and Karen Grassle. And we all went, oh no, oh no. So you see, I've gotten so much more famous that <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it that way too. Listen, I've had it all my life. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> well, once again, Karen, thank you for joining us. I apologize. I, I didn't get a headset about it, but I'm so glad to have you here. And now let's round it up with our final guest. She is, of course, is an actress producer whose body of work includes The Miracle Worker, Babylon 5, and of course, Batgirl on Batman the Animated Series. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Laura Ingalls Wilder. Please welcome back Melissa Gilbert. Hi, everybody. Hi. 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 Oh, uh, <laughs> Melissa, welcome back. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I guess I, I'll tell you where I am. I'm in upstate New York. Um, the weather is absolutely stunningly beautiful in the high 70s, sunny. But we also mm. just got the tail end of Elsa came through the last couple of days. So it's also a little muddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it uh, skirted around us, and uh, you know, Category One hurricane in Florida means you just bring in the patio furniture. But uh, that's <laughs> you know, you're <laughs> flirting when you're disappointed by a hurricane. Yeah, and I've told all my friends posting those memes like, uh, "Guys, early in the season, let's not tempt fate." So, <laughs> but indeed, Melissa and everyone, distinguished guests, well, thank you all for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. We're so glad to have you here on our <laughs> online forum. Our team is going through our chat room right now to pull out the questions for us. In the meantime, I'd like to just throw this out. Um, what uh, what was the best memory that you've taken from being a part of Little House? Fam being a family. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The, the bonds that we all developed with one another and in, in the experience of, of working together in that environment, especially for us, those of us who started out as children, was really, really significant in in developing who we eventually became. And and um, like Bonnie said, you know, it was a it was by and large a really joyful place to go to work. 
Definitely. And, and the laughing and the joking, most sales people don't joke around and laugh as much as we did on the set of Little House. We had Michael and his practical jokes and his high-pitched giggle, and everyone on the set had really excellent senses of humor. And just <laughs> people would come and guest on our show from other shows and say, you have no idea how boring it is on most other sets. <laughs> oh, you know, still, yeah. to this, still to this day when I do my makeup, I'll still take the rouge and dab my nose and chin the way Whitey used to do. And that was like, I, oh, was I, I still do it to this day. Well, we had the best. So we learned well, you know. Yeah, I think one of my happy memories is a day when it was New Year's Eve and we had to go to work and we were unlike many people going to work hard that day and it was 50 mile an hour winds and it was really cold in Simi that day and i remember that we got to go in the girls and i and go into the little house and kent mcrae came there and gave us hot drinks hmm. Oh, I, Ken, I Ken McRae was our producer. Yes, yes. A wonderful terrific, producer. Terrific guy. Yeah. Listen, I, I had such a, you know, I was 45 coming to Hollywood and uh, I, I got so lucky to get this job. And Michael and Victor did nothing but tease me all the time <laughs> I was there. They made fun of everything. <laughs> And they, you know, it's not the Me Too. It wasn't that kind of thing. It was like <laughs> it was fun of everything I did because I was such a newbie in Hollywood and in, in L.A. But it was so much fun, and I loved the attention. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the attention, and and they they made it. You know, every day it was just fun. Nice. Not yeah. not every set can say that. No, not every actor can say that about every day on Little House on the Prairie either. Uh, some of us actually had more real life going on during the series. So it wasn't all as we imagine, but it was still so worthwhile, so valuable. And I feel so proud of the work that we did. I was going to say, Patty, I could never have imagined when, when, when Michael said uh, to all of us at one time or another, the show will live on long past all of us. You know, it's, it's um, one of the things that we all did on July 1st was honor the passing of Michael. And he was so, he was so, at the time, it didn't seem possible that the show could outlive us all. Now, 42 years later for me, 47 years later for others, um, it's absolutely real that it could go on long after we all do. And that's just yeah. an incredible honor. It really is. It does. And it's a, it's a testament to so much, too. You know, Not only the talent. From... Yeah. Go ahead, Charlotte. But it's so terrible. I, I, found what was so amazing. I had done a lot of television before I got the part of Miss Beetle on Little House on the Prairie. And all shows that you worked on, you worked till 10 o'clock at night and you were back at six in the morning. And that was just kind of normal. And all of a sudden I'm on this show with all these children and their parents on the set. And we get to go home at five o'clock, six o'clock, go have home and have dinner, have a real life. And come back at it, you know, okay, early. But we had a life. And that's because Michael was a family man. And he understood as far as his cast and his crew, they all had families to go home to. He was so efficient shooting that he only shot what he needed to put together for the show. And that to me was absolutely remarkable. You know, I so appreciated that. Mm -hmm. One of the sad things is, uh, the sad, very sad thing for me is that, I've been given, I'm 92, I've been given 92 years so far on this earth. And I, it's not fair that people like Michael and Victor went so young. And that's so sad for me that they went so young. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But they, they live on, they live on, but, they but do. thank God. You know, Little House was my very first uh, primary television experience. I had done soaps in New York, but I had never done prime time. And um, I had everything to learn about working on film because we were working with film. We weren't working with video 
wasn't like a sitcom. And so the whole process was completely different. And um, it was so lovely because it, the, during the pilot, it was really just the family and then Victor. And we had the opportunity to build these relationships out of town, all of us new to each other, and the family also, everything was new. Where were they going to wind up? How was it going to work out? And we had a lot of parallel feelings to that. Yep. Absolutely. That we did. Absolutely. And again, I think this is this is a testament to the talent in front and behind the camera of this show. I think it lives on wonderfully as a period piece. So I, I think it, there is a certain evergreen aspect to it. And I, I was describing the show to uh, to my nephew and I was just how important it was. I said, like, look, you, you, the country was in a weird place at that time. Uh, you know, it's like the 70s post Watergate era, you know, the, the idealism in the sixties kind of fell away to like the seventies cynicism and hedonism. And America was just looking for something to all sit down and enjoy like a, a family entertainment that the whole family could truly enjoy and not just, you know, cartoons and silliness. The thing to remember too, that's important about little house as well is that it was not lost on the creative forces behind the show. The, the era that we were living through, post-Vietnam, the civil rights movement having come to the fore, the equal rights movement having come to the forefront, and those storylines and those issues were all interwoven in what we did. So though we weren't hard-hitting in, in, in the way we told these stories, the stories were still there and still as deep and important and are definitely a reflection of the time then and now when looking back again now, having come through the pandemic um, mo mo more or less at this point, uh, when when we were in the, the thick of it and all on lockdown, I heard from people all over the world about Little House in the Prairie and the relevance of episodes we did then with yes. quarantine and plague yes. and um, the wisdom of Solomon and how that affected people in the midst and, and middle of the Black Lives Matter movement this past year. And, and um, I think that a lot of that gets lost when people just talk about Little House and dismiss it as just another family show. It was a lot yeah. more than that. No, absolutely. This show is not afraid mm -hmm. to address the challenges of life in that time period. You know, uh, just, yeah, I mean, stillborn children and 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 death i mean not that i have it on a regular basis but the show was 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 pretty brave in saying yes this was a part of living at that time you could catch a cold and die uh, <laughs> you know another thing about the show is that there was a beautiful scene in the pilot with mike and the native american chief and um, I think that is so great because, as you probably know, in the books, Ma was very terrified of Native Americans, and she said things that right. were cruel oh, about yeah. Native Americans that actually um, have hurt young people's feelings who were reading the books. And I think in the television series, we tried to counteract that. Yeah. It was to yeah. kill the Indians. That's what it was all about. Which is yeah. when you think about it today, it's horrible. It's horrible what we did. What's and, great and that was all an Indian was to be killed. In in the books and in the show, Laura and Charles always argued with Ma. Ma would say, Oh, the Indians, and there was that Mrs. Scott character who's really awful and saying horrible things. But then always Charles would say, Remember, remember the Indians who saved our lives. Remember and, and Laura would say, But why? Why? Why do we not like them? And then that was really played heavily into the show where they gave what sold out the Shen like a bigger part and everything in dialogue. So yeah. that the arguments of the time of how do we relate to these people whose country we just up and into. Yeah. yeah, very much so, very much so. I had one quick question before we go, or ready to go to our audience questions, but I just want to throw this out. If anyone knows the answer, if this is truthful or not, uh, as I understand it, uh, when uh, there was a change in studios, um, they were preparing a studio and they found the yellow brick road from the Wizard of Oz? Oh, yeah, we worked on it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. 
Yeah, on stage 15, 15 at MGM. Yes. We get sound stage ever. And we had been told when we got there, you know, Wizard of Oz was here, but they were moving like, you know, they would, they never take anything away. They just put linoleum over things. Yeah. And they just, and it was, and I was like, <laughs> like, Melissa and I found it. We're I was like, come here. We looked away. And it was the corner part where like the gray and the red swirly stuff yeah. was. Wow. We tried. We tried clicking our heels. We couldn't get to Oz. We tried. We tried really hard. Really hard. <laughs> Uh, so did anybody like try to pry the bricks up and go home with them, or they were painted? They were painted. They were painted. Oh, they weren't actual. They were actually just painted squares. No. Okay, that would have been wow. weird, a jackhammer. That, that, yeah. Daddy, it was show business. <laughs> it was really I, cool because you could I, see the corner. It's like, okay, this is right when Munchkin Town Center, like the fountain would have been there, and there's the thing. Yeah, and red. And we're like running on it and going. Nick, hey, that would be awesome. It's well, like Karen, in my defense, the, the, the production was, uh, was very opulent and everything else. Yes, I do know it's show business. I got an equity car. I'm trying with you on that problem. So anyway, uh, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you all. Ready to go audience questions. And audience, just to let everybody know, uh, she could not join us on the online forum, but Kenny Lester is watching this right now, and she is available for autographs and, and chats as oh, well. Kenny. So please. Hi, Kenny. Please Hi, shout Kenny. out to her. Absolutely. We'd love to have you here next time. We're so looking forward to it. We're working on technology to get more guests in here. So I promise we're trying to get an unlimited amount. So we're looking forward hey, to that. Kenny, congratulations on your book during the pandemic. Yes, congratulations. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I say we're going to go for our first question and let's go ahead and roll it. And here's one from Dylan who wants to know who was your favorite guest star on the show? Hmm. I know mine. Go ahead. Pat Neal. Pat Neal. That's what I was going to say. Pat Neal. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Johnny Cash. Johnny, Johnny Cash. Cash. Ray Bolger. Oh, yes. <laughs> Speaking of Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Ray was so sweet. Too. Johnny Such Cash. A man. Johnny. Johnny Cash. Yeah. Patricia Neal was so cool with the kids. She let us hang out in her dressing room and she played memory games with us and memorized all our names and birthdays. And it was really great. And she was doing it to kind of retrain her memory because she had issues with that in the past and, and had recovered from the whole stroke thing. But she played games with us. She knew all our names and all our birthdays. And she was just like this really wonderful, warm, inviting person. Yeah. James Cromwell. Jamie. Uh, Jamie was wonderful. Thank you great for bringing actor. it up, Lucy. He was wonderful. Great actor. Absolutely great actor. So, any other favorites? Going once, going twice. And Dylan, thank you. Great question to start us off with. Uh, what do we have next? Here's one from Abby who wants to know what is your favorite memory of Michael Landon? Oh, that's easy for me. Uh, he, he, we did a scene. We, we, we were starting a scene uh, with Victor and myself. And I said, Michael, I said, I don't think you staged this well. Because he always just did the scene and you came in and did it. And I said, he, I said Michael, I don't think you've staged it well. I was sweating. You I, actually said that to him? I said, I don't think you've this very well. Oh, and my God. Thought, I said, let me show you how it should go. And I, I acted out the whole scene for him and all the parts and everything. And he looked at me and he looked at the cinematographer and he said, how long? And the cinematographer said, about an hour. He said, do it. <gasps> we did it my way. And it was, we never talked about it after, it never happened again. <laughs> but I was so sure about this scene and it had to be right. And I knew I was right, but oh man, did I sweat bullets. <laughs> but that was great. That's so great wow. went with your idea. He yeah. could be very flexible that way. He did. He did. I and love it. it. It was wonderful. Uh, not, not a lot of directors would be. No. no. <laughs> one, one of my favorite memories of Michael is when I was reading for the part. And he sat down on the floor, and I was sitting on the couch. And he was so close to me, it was really unnerving. <laughs> and um, we were in the scene together, playing back and forth. And uh, finished the first one, he said, good. Went on to the second one. And now he leapt off the floor, I'm telling you, like a jack-in-the-box, and said, 
standard award robe. Oh. Well, it wasn't that simple. It didn't go like that in the end. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I was so thrilled to have his confidence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. When uh, when Michael likes it, when Michael likes something you were doing, he would give you this sort of this okay sign. And you know, Michael never looked at a monitor. He was always right next to the lens. He was watching what you were doing, and he could be so attentive uh, when you were doing something that was really that required a lot of focus. And when he was happy with it, he let you know. And that was a really lovely quality that he had. He, 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 I, I have, I have a, an, an encyclopedia of memories of him, both off and on screen. But the one that stands out now to kind of dovetail into this conversation was the one day that I didn't know my lines. One day, only one, but it never happened again. I did not know what I was supposed to say. And he was directing and I, 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 I couldn't do it. And he, he cut everything and he said he stood over me and he said you don't know the scene do you and i immediately i think i was 11 started sobbing i'm so sorry i don't know what I just did. he went okay okay everybody go away come here he got the script and we walked and he ran the lines with me a bunch of times wow. and he said okay do you feel comfortable do you feel ready and i said yeah i am he said good good okay so we're going to do this. I'm going to call everybody in and it's going to be okay. And then he bent down in front of me and he looked me in the eye and he said, and this is never happening again. Oh. And I immediately started crying again. And he went, no, 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 don't cry. Don't cry. We have to <laughs> Just don't let it happen again. And it never did anywhere ever in my <laughs> entire career. <laughs> wow. career. career. He always yes. wanted to make I his remember kids telling laugh. Michael and um, I would be sitting next to Melissa and it'd be time for Melissa's close up and we'd be doing a dinner scene and Mike would be on the side of the camera and Mike would know that he had the shot that he wanted, but he wasn't going to let us know that. So Melissa would try and be so professional and he'd pick up peas and start flicking them at us. <laughs> and Melissa would try so hard not to laugh. And I'm looking at Melissa like for guidance as little sister, like, are we breaking? Are we like <laughs> holding it together? What are we doing? And he would just toss little pieces of food at us to, to see if he could get um, Melissa to break her. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I cut and let us off the hook. But. Nice. Uh, Charlotte, uh, you were going to say that? Oh, well, I remember telling Michael one time a story about my godmother, who was a one room school teacher in um, Northern California. And one day she had literally been locked in the schoolhouse by the the local boys who were all big lumberjack kids. You know, they worked in the woods and the forest. And they kept her in the schoolroom by throwing rocks at the door. And it was a true story. And I told him that. And he wrote an episode about Miss Beetle. Uh, and Miss Beetle gets fired because she can't handle the big farm boys who come back to school and they're dropping their books on the floor and they're being very bullish. And and uh, Mrs. Olson walks in and I get fired. Um, and then, um, of course, later on, the teacher they replaced me with is meaner than ever and they fire him and bring me back so <laughs> but I was I so touched that, he took that story with that was a true story in my own family and made it into a you know an episode of Little House that's fantastic nice very yeah. nice yes very nice <clears throat> who's got Lucy uh I got one just just his general sense of humor. I dreaded doing any scenes with Michael because I couldn't keep a straight face. It was very <laughs> difficult. And usually it was about something really important, like a bully in my class. You know, very serious. And I I thought, oh please, I can't do I can't get through this. <laughs> because, <man. laughs> He you are an him. easy target, Lucy. You are such an easy target. I love him so much. Well, he, were, 
he liked outtakes. He liked to keep the outtakes. Um, when I did the thing where I fell off the horse, the famous go down the hill in the wheelchair episode, and I had just uh, crashed the horse into the tree branch, and I'm supposed to be unconscious. I'm lying there unconscious on the ground. And the, the blood, they put the fake trickle of blood, and, and Laura and Mary have screamed, get John Baker, and run away. And I have to lie there unconscious with the blood trickling out of my nose for a few more seconds. And so I'm lying there, and it's like, well, this is nice. I get to lie in the cool grass. And... You, and I'm waiting to hear cut, and I'm being still. <laughs> what is not coming? And I am lying there forever with the blood trickling. And then I hear a faint whispering of like, "Don't cut, keep it." And I'm like, oh. and then a finger is suddenly in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get a shot of him sticking his finger in my nose to have an outtake. So, At yeah. least you were <laughs> laying on the ground. He used to do that to me when I was running away from camp. And then he would whisper cut and I would keep going until I was back at the dressing room. <laughs> now let's go ahead and roll another one. And here it comes from Isabella. Did Little House teach you any lessons that apply in your life today? Yes. I am early for everything. <laughs> I have never been late on a set ever in my life. And that was the lesson I learned. And, and as a consequence, I'm early for everything, every appointment in my life, medical, hairdresser, manicure, anything. I'm always there 15 minutes early, so, to some annoyance to some people. But that's the lesson I learned. And I, I, I must say, when I, I was very uh, a little bit snobbish about the fact that sometimes I, the, the script would come and I, I'm, I'm in it, but I don't do anything. I, you know, and I think it's like, I say, Michael, I, I'm, 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 this is, I can't do this. I can't come on and just not do anything. I said, oh. you know, I, it, I'm, I'm not, the, I can't do that. And he'd say, uh, I'll tell you something. He said, we hire you, we pay you to be here, to be part of the group. And we, sometimes you're in something and sometimes you're not, but we pay you to be there so that when we need you to act, you're there and then you do your acting. Otherwise, we just want you to be there. And it, it doesn't matter on film, you're there and you're part of it. And that's always helped me because like, for instance, a Better Call Saul, they called me in to do a part. I was embarrassed because it was so small. And I, oh, oh it's too small. <laughs> and you know, I had the greatest time. And it was wonderful. And I loved Bob Odenkirk. And it, it was so worthwhile to me. And if I had said, but I remembered Michael. And I, I had said, okay, just do it. To be there. It's a part of a good thing. Just be there. And it was yeah. wonderful. Paid off very well. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. I think the yeah. the biggest lesson I learned um, of of so so many, and and this was also impactful on on those of us who were kids because we were just absorbing everything from everyone around us like sponges, both personally and professionally. But professionally, the one thing I learned about the job is to respect everybody's job on the set. There is not one person there who is mm -hmm. less important than anybody else. And if one person is missing, the whole thing falls apart. From craft service to the greensman to number one on the call sheet, we are all the same. And Michael insisted that I have a very healthy and hearty respect for everybody's job there to the point of, of actually having me shadow people at times so that I would mm. learn what they did. That's pretty and, cool. And, and to be off book. Well, and never not in all my life. I mean, that's really stuck with me and traumatized by it. We all got a major work ethic. Everyone, especially the kids, all developed this really heavy-duty work ethic. And, you know, you hear the cliche that actors don't, are, are lazy and don't have a work ethic and that child actors don't have a work ethic. <laughs> Anyone who worked on the show, even, you know, even really young kids, even, even like you know, Rachel, absolutely. You had a job and you knew you had a job and you were respected for your job. And you were told, yes, you are here working. It wasn't like, oh, okay, you kids, you're just goofing off. It's like, well, okay, we're goofing off, but then we're going to go back to work. And oh, yeah, you're working here. I'm three. Yes, but you're working here. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we were raised with that work. Ethic, there was respect for hard work. And I think everybody kept that one. 
One time, <laughs> one time in my own personal development of me as an actress in my career um, on Little House um, is when we did The God Sister. And there was a scene where Carrie wakes up crying. And originally my sister was supposed to do the scene and she didn't want to do it. And Michael had changed it to laying on the ground and done some other little things. And um, my mom came to me and said, you need to do the scene. Robin's not going to do it. And I'm, and I told her I was scared to do it. I didn't want to do it. I just, you know, the, the pressure of performing that scene scared me. And so my mom said, it'll be fine. You're the, you're the stronger of the two. I need you to do it, blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like, okay, okay. Mm. But it was the first time in my career I took all of those nerves and used them for the benefit of the scene. And it actually became a conduit for all the emotion that was needed in that scene. So to take all of that and harness it and use it in a good way, we did it in one take. Michael said cut and he moved on to the next scene. And I was like, it took me like another half hour to stop crying. <laughs> I'm down because there was such a buildup of nerves, but it was a really growing uh, part in my career as an actress to be able to feel that, but be able to use it in a beneficial way for what I needed to do. It was all okay. <laughs> Fair. Absolutely fair. Uh, who's got Lucy? How about you? Did you pick up anything from your experiences? Oh, that's. Uh, I guess <laughs> not, not to complain about things. Because um, <laughs> back in the 1880s, 1870s, mm -hmm. um, life was a little more difficult. Um, <laughs> It was very difficult wearing those costumes in the middle of the summer, I have to mm. say, in Sydney Valley. And and I thought, nope, nope. They had to do that back then. You gotta deal with it. I yeah. Maybe appreciate my own contemporary <clears throat> life. I like living the electric age. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think many of us would give it up. <laughs> uh, I got a few Ren Fair buddies that uh, like that life, but not me. <laughs> mm -mm. Uh, absolutely. Dean, how about you? Do you uh, pick up anything from your experience of the show you still use? Well, I think, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's like with everybody, there's so, there's so many things. But I, I think the things that stand out for me are sort of the, the technical sides of making something and watching Michael and his team work. It was just a masterclass every day, watching the way a scene was set up, the way it was lit, the way it was shot, the efficient way that Michael moved through the material. Uh, there's never a time when I'm on a set working with people now, and I work in a very different capacity with people now, but there's never a time when I don't think, how would Michael have done this? How would Kent McRae have done this? because they were just masterful at what they were doing. We were all so fortunate to be working with these people. Uh, you know, they were just the best of the best. And I agree with all the other lessons that people have shared. I mean, don't complain, be positive, because it was just, there was so much positive energy around that set all the time. And you just, if you just latched onto that, you could be carried by it. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so it was all good. It was all good. Absolutely, absolutely. And Karen, bring us home. What uh, did you pick up anything uh, on the on the show that uh, carried uh, with you? I, I had so much to learn. So I I learned constantly. Um, I read a book while we were doing the show called Grist for the Mill by Ram Dass, and Grist that book Grist for the Mill by Ram Dass, and that mm -hmm. book really helped me take every single uh, challenge and consider it part of the journey. And I think that's very, very useful in um, a series where, you know, the work goes on and on and on year after year. Um, so you have to find a way to make it meaningful for yourself and continue to commit to it. Yeah, that's it. 
No, that's that's enough. Absolutely. Isabella, thank you. Very wonderful question. I think we have time for one more. Let's see if we go out on a fun, quick one. Let's see. What do we got? From Matthew. Were there any topics on the show that the young actor's parents mm. didn't want them to be a part of? Huh. Hmm. That's interesting. That's a good Come say hello. Come say hello. Uh, uh, do we have another panelist? We have yes. No, just say hello. This is my husband, Bill. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Big fan. Uh, Sorry. No, no, I just, no, absolutely not. You know, I can't yeah. think of anything that, that was there, uh, you guys who were kids, were there, was there anything your parents were, uh, my, my mom, <laughs> my mom was there all the time. My mom was there when Dean and I had our first kiss. And she, she I, definitely I, didn't want that to happen. Oh, I, I mean, know. she I, definitely did not want that to happen. You think she did? I just remember her crying. I thought it was happy tears. It didn't sound like happy tears to me. <laughs> it's well, hard I to wonder, tell. You. I wonder about the show with the rain. How did yeah, I think about that too. Feel about that. I, I think that'd be a question for Matthew, Matthew and and um yeah uh, for Matt. Uh, right. oh God I can't think of the name Olivia? of the actor Olivia Olivia Barish who played Sylvia but she Olivia was a, they were teenagers right young teens so yeah but I, everybody who worked on the show had to know what we were working on yeah yeah we did we all knew what the subject matter was certainly yeah um. Interesting. It was fair. I, I uh, question because I don't think there was. I mean, not when I was around. I don't think there was anything that that Michael would have done that that the parents would have objected to. My parents were my parents. My parents didn't, didn't care, give a hoot. But my my parents. <laughs> my parents would get, oh, you're killing someone this week. Great, good ratings. Um, <laughs> Annie Marion, who took me to the set every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. This woman. She sometimes she did kind of like oh, couldn't you play someone nicer? Sometimes would she would kind of balk at things. The one that just about did in my poor Auntie Marion was um it was the episode when I called poor uh, Mary four eyes when Mary got glasses <laughs> and I called four eyes. And my Annie Mary was just shaking her head. And we're done. She said, oh, no, no, it was very good. It's just that when Annie Marion was in high school and she got glasses, she was very tall. And the girls called her a four-eyed donkey. And she actually got called four-eyed. Oh. Oh. That's all she could do. And she was like, I'm her favorite niece. And she adores me. And I'm calling, I'm screaming four eyes at this girl. <laughs> four <laughs> eyes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you remember the, the reason she, the re ahead, remember Mary walked in when I was being kissed by a handsome stranger and I was wearing my glasses and she realized that four eyes wasn't a bad thing that's yeah. right yeah. oh that was sort of the button to that moment yeah. that you were, yes that you were being kissed by the handsome stranger right very nice <laughs> 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 uh, no, I think that was very nice. I mean, you know, good lesson. There, there, there were a lot of good lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there, there, there really were. And Matthew is a great question. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast of Little House on the Prairie. Panelists, it's been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we take our leave? Thank you, Patty. Appreciate it. Stay Thank tuned. You. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you for doing this. We love this. This is like, I guess, it's like the, the family reunion barbecue or something. This is, uh, yeah, Patty, <laughs> things like this have uh, been provided a whole new way for people to stay connected mm -hmm. with their, their show communities. So this is really cool. And thank you for this. Uh, I would say everybody keep an eye out for Karen's book. Yes. Oh, so November. Well, Melissa. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a book. No matter. It's celebrated. Attention should be paid. And Charlie has a book. Oh. Allison has a book. book. Karen's book. When is your book coming out? November. There you go. All right. Yeah.
Bright Lights Prairie Dust. Go get it. Pre-order now. Thanks, kid. I Absolutely. trained her well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Charlotte, Charlotte, sh show us your cover again. The cover of your oh. book. Show it, show it again. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah, Where there is we it? go. Yeah. Oh, right. There we go. Oh. Absolute delight. Great book. Thank find, you. Find, the, find these and Karen's upcoming book where fine books are fine and sold. Please subscribe and like to all of our GalaxyCon social media. In the meantime, once again, panelists, thank you for joining us. It's been my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us and thank you for your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care and remember, smiles are free. Please spend them often. <laughs>